21st at 9 this Sunday, the 8th of September 2024. TikTok Promises and proposals made public by key candidates running for the top office with just 12 days remaining for the 2024 presidential poll. Visiting the Wonder, tourism earnings crossed 280 million US dollars in August. Earnings from January to August this year depict a whopping 66.1% increase compared to the same period last year. Relaxed, the central bank extends the deadline for exporters to convert their export proceeds into Sri Lankan rupees. Obey Vishwasi Dino Sinsurain, then Lagamati Farmers in Labaka Hacker. From Adaderana, this is Adaderana First at Nine. From Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to Other Derana First at Nine. I'm Aditya Dhrisingha joining you live with the latest in Sri Lanka and around the world. Now taking you straight to your top story this evening, presidential candidate and leader of the Samagi Janabalavegya, leader of the opposition, Sajid Premadasa highlights that the 22 million strong population of the country is committed to establishing a government of the common man under the leadership of the Samagi Janabalavegya. Meanwhile, speaking at an event in Colombo today, Premadasa underlined the necessity of reforming the rules and regulations that govern the disabled community in Sri Lanka and pointed out that it is required that the, legisl rather that the required legislation will come into effect within the first three months of his presidency. Another election rally pledging support to the leader and the presidential candidate of the Samagi Jana Balavegya led Samagi Jana Sandane, opposition leader Sajid Premadasa, was held today in Thalavakale. Merate Bivena, Dakshatama cabinet, take a hat at the passe, Bivene, Sajid Premadasa, Matia, and Nai Katin, Visek, and the Jack Ranaka Pamakina, Panivide Mama, and the Mejana Tower Deneva, Itapasiapi, Parliament to Matthew and December Masa Patanova, April Venakota Chandas Yalma Jack Ranakarla, Merate Balavat Manduapi Hadana. Developing and strengthening the new Aurelia district will be our first task after we win the upcoming election. Following my victory, I will visit New Aurelia once again. However, my visit will not be to sell off the Nuara Elia post office. Instead, I will grant the ownership of small-scale tea estates to the unemployed youth and workers in the Nuara Elia district. Under the SJB government, estate workers will also be given the opportunity to become small-scale tea estate holders. The incumbent president has already accepted his defeat in the upcoming presidential poll. Both Ranil and Andhra Kumara are completely invested in a mission to defeat Sajid Premadasa in the presidential poll. However, the 22 million people of this country have already committed themselves to ensure the victory of Sajid Premadasa and establish a government of the common man. Meanwhile, opposition leader Sajid Premadasa held a special discussion in Colombo with the disabled community. A new policy statement compiled to address the woes of the disabled community was presented at the event. I assure that the rules, regulations and laws for the disabled community will be reformed under SJB government. All the legal reforms concerning the disabled community will be passed within the first three months of our tenure. Horizon Campus 2024 Intake 2. Register now. Crunchy goodness for hunger on the go. How do we are Mitra Lassan to Venus Kelly? Venus Manusik. Dilit Venus Manusik. Ratak Venus Karanata Tarwin. Now, President Ranil Vikramasinghe, raising concerns regarding the National People's Power's policy manifesto, inquired how the NPP led government plans to implement an export oriented economy if it intends to cancel free trade agreements with other nations as mentioned in their policy manifesto. He raised those concerns during a rally in Valimada today. Additionally, President Vikramasinghe inquired whether the NPP supports the incumbent government's policies 
since the NPP plans to implement the anti-corruption bill if it comes to power, which has already been passed by the incumbent government. <laughs> An election campaign rally themed Puluan Sri Lanka, pledging support to President Ranil Vikramasinghe, was held in Balimada this evening. This is a historic moment. I assure you that Ranil Vikramasinghe is entering this election with 6 million votes in his favour. This election is a competition between a leader who saved the country and two leaders who have only saved themselves. President Vikramasinghe made the country stable gradually. Bangladesh has a lot of people like Sajid Premadasa and Andhra Kumara Disanayaka, but they do not have anyone like President Vikramasinghe. I am here to support the victory of independent presidential candidate President Ranil Vikramasinghe in the upcoming presidential election. I have worked with Ranil Vikramasinghe for 16 years and with Sajid Premadasa for 4 years. I am well aware of their strengths and weaknesses. My sole intention is to support the victory of President Vikramasinghe who assumed responsibility for all the citizens of this country when the previous president who won 6 Point nine million votes abandoned the people during a time of crisis. We started by providing a 5,000 rupee allowance to state employees. With sufficient funds now available, we will increase salaries and allowances as outlined in the Uday Senaviratna report. This will provide great relief in the coming year. I am committed to advancing this agenda. Our next plan is to introduce smart agriculture through agriculture modernization. I have a question for Sajid Premadasa. There are two manifestos from him. I would like to know which one to choose. Additionally, I was inquired about Andhra Kumara Disanayake's manifesto recently. He has stated that he will cancel all free trade agreements. Without those agreements, how will we export goods? I requested a response from him, but he did not provide one. I was later informed that he is unwell. I wish him a speedy recovery. However, he did respond to my speech in Jaffna. Regarding the bond scam, even the presidential commission found that I was not involved. However, to determine the involvement of certain individuals, it recommended filing a court case. The High Court determined that we were not guilty and the Court of Appeal confirmed that verdict. The NPP has promised to take us to court while the court has already declared our innocence. They also claim that they will end corruption and implement the anti-corruption bill which we introduced. I would like to know if he supports our stance on this matter. I wish him a speedy recovery and hope he will address these questions. <laughs> A presidential candidate of the Sri Lanka Pudujana Perumuna, Namal Rajapaksha, claims that Sri Lanka Pudujana Perumuna is a political movement that believes in strengthening the Sri Lankan economy by protecting all local economic agents. He made those remarks at a Sri Lanka Pudujana Perumuna electorate meeting in Panadura today. Another electorate meeting of the Sri Lanka Pudujana Perumuna, pledging support to the party's presidential candidate, Namal Rajapaksha, was held today in Panadura. Ranil Vikramasinghe, Sajid Premadasa and Andhra Kumar Disanayake make no mention of infrastructure development through their policy manifestos. They say nothing about extending road networks and establishing new electricity connections. Their policy manifestos prove the fact that Mahindra Rajapaksha developed the country's infrastructure. <laughs> Ours is a political party that works. Our party is also a party that worked in the past. We don't amend our political policies opportunistically, particularly targeting the polls. Our political movement firmly believes that all state and private sector salaries must increase proportionate to inflation. We will ensure that it happens. We also believe that the tax system implemented in the country must be bearable. Our political movement has a national vision. We believe that Sri Lanka's economy can be revived by strengthening the economies of all communities spread from the Dondra head to Point Pedro. We believe that the Sri Lankan economy can be strengthened by protecting local farmers, fishermen, laborers, entrepreneurs and businessmen. We firmly believe that the country can be revived through the economic policies that the country's youth advocate. 
You can read every manifesto and decide which policy suits Sri Lanka best. Try to figure out who attempts to separate and destroy the country and claim power by creating turmoil within it. You have to choose a capable candidate who can implement his program for development. If you want to secure a good future for your children, please cast your vote before the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna's logo on the 21st of September. Now, leader and presidential candidate of the National People's Power, Anrukumara Disanayaka, says that an NPP led government will end nepotism in politics and hand it over to the next generation of the entire nation. He made those remarks at an event held in Colombo today. The youth manifesto of the National People's Power, named Game Changer, was unveiled today at the Sugudadasa Stadium in Colombo under the patronage of leader and presidential candidate of the NPP, Anurukumar Disanayaka. I recently saw how President Ranil Vikramasinghe attempts to befriend me. Despite his efforts as such, we call for an inquiry into how the Land Reform Commission distributed lands under his tenure. He can continue his attempts to befriend me until the 21st. After that, he will realize the truth. Looking at Sajid Premdas's conduct in the lead up to the election, it is clear that he is not even qualified to be a municipal councillor if he was not our Premdas's son. Nama Rajapaksha had the blessings of his father's presidency to be a presidential candidate. President Vikram Singh had his uncle's presidential legacy behind him to stay strong throughout his political career. We are planning to take over this traditional politics, which was once controlled by families and relatives, and hand it over to you. <laughs> मैं पावल परंपरा वाता तेरे देश पालन बैठन निकल ताव काली को अपा आता तो हुआ मारु कर गना उब आता तो लबादी मत मैं यहाँ पे आप एक्शन आवे Meanwhile, the 25th conference of the Intercompany Employees Union was held this afternoon at the PD Citizen Ground in Colombo. They ask how we will win with our previous 3% water base. Now we do not hear those questions. President Rani Vikramasinghe says that we will not be defeated if the public votes for Sajid. Sajid Premadasa, on the other hand, says that we will not defeat if the public votes for Ranil. Isn't that enough? The public does not want to vote us into office through Ranil or Sajid. The public will definitely cast their vote for the national people's power. Previously, they said that we cannot win. Now they say that we won't last in power for more than six months. They have changed their opinion about our potential to win. We do not endure so many rumours and allegations to give up power after six months. For more political updates, local news and business news, join us on the other side of this short commercial break. Stay with us. Star dishwash belly till idul basu in sede. Star dishwash magic topica. Crunchy goodness for hunger on the go. Chandu so ne khaki mana pesi ga TV. Si ga TV sa basu piri nil. Welcome back. Now the presidential candidate of the Sarvajana Balaya, Dilip Jayavira, asserted that the four candidates who did not show up for yesterday's public debate have no right to address the nation again. Addressing a gathering, the Sarvajana Balaya's candidate for the presidency went on to pledge that the political tactics of his alliance will not negatively impact its supporters. <laughs> A rally in support of presidential candidate of the Sarvajana Balaya, Dilip Jayavira, was held in Chilo this morning. Yesterday, all four top candidates who have three rallies per day were invited for a debate. All broadcasting corporations broadcast it live. The whole country was watching. They did not have to even bear any cost. They were given a chance to explain their plan to the country. No one showed up. They missed the opportunity to send their message to the public and say, we have a policy, we have a plan. They had the chance to make the case on why their policy is the best. I can understand how two of those parties bring in crowd and how funds flow in. They are politicians who perpetuated corrupt politics. But how 
can the party that advocates against corruption so much hold three rallies per day? According to our calculations, they need about 100 million rupees for it. According to my knowledge, even if you confiscate the property of smugglers in Colombo, you will not be able to raise such a sum of money. They have been doing it for months now. They must reveal the source of funds. If they don't do that, it must be because they betrayed this country's sovereignty and territorial integrity for money. The top four candidates who did not participate in the debate yesterday do not have the right to address this nation again. Meanwhile, another rally of the Sarvajan Balaya was held in Kurunagra today under the patronage of the Alliance's presidential candidate Dirit Jayavira. <laughs> Kota Be Rajapaksha did not leave his portfolio because he did not have any political support. His immediate family ousted him. They ousted him in a situation because they could not fulfill their narrow political agendas. I never left this nationalist camp which has been on its feet for 30 years. I will also never stop representing this nationalist camp. We pledge that our political tactics will never impact our supporters negatively. This program is sponsored by... Then repair this year so to signal gram make us your attack. Lanka with vast in a military in a pack. Now, tourism earnings in Sri Lanka reached over 280 million US dollars in August 2024, an increase from the 210.2 million US dollars recorded during the same period last year. According to data released by the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka earned over 2 billion US dollars through tourism during the first eight months of this year. The latest figures from the central bank indicates that earnings from the tourism sector totaled 282.1 million US dollars in August 2024, up from 210.5 million US dollars in August 2023. However, this amount is lower than the 328 million US dollars earned during the previous month. During the first eight months of the year, the tourism sector generated a total of 2.17 billion US dollars, marking a 66.1% increase from the 1.3 billion US dollars earned during the same period last year. This revenue increase is attributed to the country recording a total of 1.3 million tourist arrivals by end of August this year. During August this year, Sri Lanka saw 164,609 tourist arrivals, up 20.7% from August 2023. Additionally, the Tourism Development Authority reports that Sri Lanka welcomed 21,073 tourists during the first week of September. Indians topped the list of arrivals with 4,926 tourists visiting the island, accounting to 20.2% of the total arrivals during the first five days of September. The United Kingdom secured the second spot with 1,718 tourist arrivals, representing 8.2% of the weekly total. Significant numbers of tourist arrivals were also reported from China, Germany, Australia and Spain. Now the Central Bank of Sri Lanka has extended the deadline for exporters of goods to convert their export proceeds into Sri Lankan rupees. Under the newly issued repatriation of export proceeds into Sri Lanka, Rules No. 1 of 2024, published in Gazette Extraordinary No. 2391-02, the time for mandatory conversion has been extended up to the 10th day of the month following the expiration of three calendar months from the date of receipt, of, date of receipt to convert their proceeds. Previously, exporters were required to convert their proceeds by the 7th day of the following month. The rules were approved in Parliament on the 4th of September and came into effect on the same day. Now, LTL Holdings Limited, the power sector conglomerate, announced plans to launch an initial public offering and be listed on the Colombo Stock Exchange. The IPO is slated to be the largest to take place on the CSC and is scheduled to open on the 10th of this month. With that, here's a look at more corporate news in brief.
LTL Holdings Limited announced plans to launch an initial public offering and be listed on the Colombo Stock Exchange, making this the largest IPO to take place on the CSE. The IPO is an offer for subscription of up to 1,379,310,400 new ordinary voting shares at an issue price of 14 rupees and 50 cents per share, via an initial issue of 16 billion rupees, with a green shoe option to increase the total to 20 billion rupees through the IPO, offering a stake of up to 22.3% of LTL to the public. The IPO opens on the 10th of September this year. Meanwhile, the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce, together with MDF Training and Consultancy, concluded a training of trainers program aimed at enhancing the capabilities of women business development coaches in Sri Lanka. Titled Building the Capacity of Women Business Development Coaches in Sri Lanka, the initiative aims to cultivate a dynamic network of women trainers who can support and mentor women entrepreneurs, thereby strengthening the entrepreneurial ecosystem in Sri Lanka. In other corporate news, John Keels Logistics Private Limited announced its collaboration with brilliant consumer products Lanka Private Limited to relaunch the pesticide brand Baygon in Sri Lanka. Baygon, formerly a market leader in Sri Lanka, withdrew from the market due to management changes. John Keels Logistics stated that it is committed to ensuring the highest compliance standards and achieving cost savings through operational productivity. And now here's a look at local news across the island in brief. Ladies College recently held its cycle parade for the second consecutive year. The event organized in collaboration with the college's Parent Teachers Association featured cycling, walking and a display of classic vintage cars. Following the parade, a carnival was held on the school grounds. The school is also set to celebrate its 125th anniversary next week. Our annual cycle parade, we do that to celebrate all the many sports that are available to our girls. Thank you so much and for all the support that we've got from so many people, from sponsors, from parents, from old girls, from the LC community and especially to the children who really enjoyed the celebration of sports and what it does and the well-being of children. Thank you and as we get ready for 100. 25 years. We thank everyone once again for coming round and supporting Ladies College. Meanwhile, a school principal in the Mulatif area was arrested for allegedly photographing his postal ballot vote after casting it. The school principal was found photographing the ballot paper at the Mulatif Education Office where he serves as a certification officer. Officers of the Election Commission promptly inspected the mobile phone of the suspect after witnessing the incident at the Mulativ Education Office. The Mulativ Police claims the principal was arrested on charges pertaining to the violation of election laws. In other local news, an Indian businessman was arrested at the Bandaranaike International Airport with 30 million rupees in gold biscuits in his possession. During the arrest, the Criminal Investigation Department discovered nine gold biscuits weighing 1 kilogram and 158 grams each, along with three other gold biscuits in the suspect's possession. And with that, we wrap up tonight's edition of Other Therna First at 9. Stay in touch with us on www.otherderna.lk for the latest developments around the clock. Thank you. Have a great night. and information you can trust 24 hours a day visit otherverna.lk